Hello and welcome to how-to video number two. Tonight, we'll be continuing with the USB toolkit we created in the previous video, adding two Linux-based data recovery tools, Duty Rescue and SmartMon Tools. SmartMon Tools is a suite of command line utilities for querying smart data from hard drives. SMART stands for Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology and is a standard way that modern hard drives collect and store information about themselves. Using Smart CTL, a part of SmartMon tools, you can easily see how long a drive has been in service, whether or how often it has reported several types of errors in the past, and even run tests and see the results. DD Rescue is another command line tool that can be invaluable in recovering information once a drive has already begun to fail. Interestingly enough, once a hard drive begins to encounter errors, you can often still read a bad sector if you retry many times in succession. Most operating systems will usually just try once or twice, then give up. DD Rescue will try many times and will log each error it finds so it can go back and retry later. As long as a hard drive is detected by Linux, you can often get a significant amount of data off of it, no matter how many errors it may have. Okay, let's get started. The Linux distro we'll use for our toolkit is called Tiny Core Linux. It's designed for exactly the purpose we're using it for, a tiny, no-frills Linux that lives off of removable media, loads entirely into RAM, and saves settings and files persistently. Find a link to the download site in the video description below. Okay, once you've downloaded the ISO file, you need to mount it. And then copy the CDE directory to the root of your USB drive and rename it TCE. The reason you need to do that is because Tiny Core will look for different directory names to find its files based on how it's booted. If it's booted off of a CD, it looks for a CDE directory. And if it's booted off of, off of writable media, like say a USB drive like we're using, then it looks for a directory called TCE. That's a little bit confusing, but not too much of a problem, luckily. All we need to do is just remember to rename that. Again, TCE. Then just copy the boot directory inside of that TCE directory. And then inside of boot, just delete ISO Linux because we're not using that. Then, after that's done, you can go ahead and unmount that ISO image. Next, we're going to need to add an entry into syslinux.cfg for our new Tiny Core Linux. You can find a text file with exactly what you need to add to your syslinux.cfg linked from the video description below. Okay, now you just need to reboot into Linux. This is the screen you'll see once you've booted off your USB drive and selected the new Boot Linux option. Okay, let's go ahead and install our two utilities. If you connect to the internet wirelessly, you'll need to set that up before we go further. Use the tool you see on the rightmost edge of the icon bar, like so. 
If your computer has a wired network connection, go straight to the next step. Select the apps icon, the circle with the blue arrow. This is the package manager that you use to install new software. After you've selected a download mirror, press the apps button, then select cloud and browse. So apps button, cloud and browse. Then type in the name of the package you're looking for in the search box. In this case, DD Rescue, and hit enter. Then select ddrescue.tcz with your mouse. Go to unboot and hit go. Now it will download and install. Then do the same thing with Smartmon tools. Unboot and go. DD Rescue can be quite complicated and deserves a video of its own. Look for that later. For now, I'll show you some of the things you can see in Smart CTL. Just remember that you, it needs to be run as root, so you should type in S-U-D-O and then Smart CTL and then the options. Keep in mind that if you have an IDE or SATA hard drive, as most of you probably do, you should use the dash D ATA option. The A option simply displays all information available. You can see this quite a bit. Now, the first thing you should be looking for is anything that says error, like raw read error rate or seek error rate. The very worst kinds of errors are the ones that are labeled offline uncorrectable, because those are ones that haven't been auto-corrected by the hard drive internals. Uncorrected errors are always very, very bad, but corrected errors are usually okay as long as that no, as the number of them isn't continually growing by a large amount. Corrected errors are signs of problems down the road, but they're not an immediate problem. Now to run a test, just type sudo smartctl d ata t, either short or long, and then the device name of your hard drive. You'll notice that it, smartctl is nice enough to tell you exactly how long you need to wait for it to complete. Also, you'll see in the dash a information, it will tell you right off the bat how long a short test and a long test take to complete. Once your test has completed, you can see the results by once again 
typing sudo smartctl dash a d a t a and then the device of your hard drive. Oftentimes that's going to be slash dev slash sda. Then you'll see the results of the test right in the test status area. Okay, so those are some of the things that you can do with Smart CTL. A very, very useful utility. Well, that about does it for video number two. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you later.